Hello everyone and welcome to the San Jose real estate market analysis breakdown for uh, August of 2022. It's been a very interesting August uh, for the folks in San Jose and the real estate that they all love. Definitely a pivot point. We've got some news that I think is going to kind of blow you away a little bit. For those of you who follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you saw a post I made earlier this week and after the MLS system updated some of their numbers, I rechecked it this morning and the numbers actually are even more dramatic than originally thought after the MLS made their update. So we're going to check all that in a minute. Now, before we get started, I want to let you all know that you can get access to a tool to get a free online estimate of your home's value that I consider to be a little bit more accurate than many others that you might have tried out there on the internet. So head on over to soldbyrobert.com and on the front page, top left side, you're going to see a place for you to enter your address. Go ahead and do that and you'll instantly be able to get access to an estimate of your home's value. It'll also give you some interesting information about your local market, trends, that sort of thing. So feel free to check that out. It's a great way to get that information without actually having to interact with a real estate agent. So I know that's always something folks enjoy. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and discuss some of these numbers as it relates to the San Jose market. Now we're gonna hit first active listings, and this just reflects the total number of homes on the market. Right, so the, if you're a buyer, this is the number of homes you had to choose from in all of San Jose. And of course, I realize San Jose is made up of a ton of micro markets. If you'd like to get more information on your local micro market where your home is located, or if you're someone who's shopping for a home and you're interested in specific parts of San Jose, you could see some potentially very wildly different numbers and trends in those micro areas. But in San Jose overall, this is what we're seeing. 744 homes were active in the month of August in 2021. Now you can see what I've done here so that you can visually compare it more easily. I've put August of 2022 and August of 2021 right next to each other. So you can see that August of 2022 is up 24.6% from the same time last year. And why do we care about comparing August of one year to August of the previous year? It helps us eliminate any seasonal influences or other weird stuff. It helps us get a more relevant number for where we are right now by comparing it to the same time last year. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, all right. Now, one thing that uh, we can also check out here is the trend. We can see that since December of 2021, we've seen a gradual increase of inventory that really peaked in July and then has dropped off a little bit in August of 2022. And we would expect that we would expect to see more sales activity in a July, which would then be reflected in an August because it takes 30 days to close escrow, right? So the, the, the standard idea of summer being the good month for buying, that's when you tend to see buyers doing their buying. They wanna get their buying done before the school year starts. It tends to happen uh, in July. So purchases happening in July are being recorded in August. So that's why we, I think one of the reasons we see such a big drop in overall inventory in August of 2022. In terms of uh, new listings, now these are the folks who decided to list their home in August of 2022. You can see that uh, we've seen a drop by 22.5% in San Jose. So fewer people are entering the market right now than the same time last year. We had 700 homes listed in August this year and 903 listed last year. And it's an interesting decline. As soon as we got into March, we had a really big jump in total number of listings in San Jose that's been steadily declining uh, as we move through the year. That's not horribly unusual. I think the season used to be a little later in the year, a couple of months later in the year, but this new standard of tons of listings hitting the market in those first couple of months of the year is now pretty normal. We've, it's been this way now for quite a few years. Uh, so it's tending to start earlier and then things really start to wind down as we would expect as we toward, hit the end of summer and start to see an approach towards winter time. All right, now we're looking at the total number of homes sold. Uh, I apologize, I didn't get a chance to change the color of that last one. This number represents August of 2021. And you can see we've seen a pretty substantial drop in August of 2022, the most recent month we have data for. We had 572 homes sold. Uh, the same time last year, we had 834 homes sold. And if we look at it, look for a trend here, 
it goes uh, as we would expect, really. We see the decline that tends to happen in the winter months as we get into uh, a peak of 852 homes in August and September last year. Uh, in 2021, a steady decline right until we hit January, where we're down to 429. And then we start to see a recovery. February, we see 460, which was a relatively small increase, and then a huge jump in the number of homes sold in March. So we peaked there in April and May. So from there on, it's, it's, it's pretty typical for the time of year. Interesting drop in July, though. Um, I, I find it interesting that we saw such a drop in July uh, compared to August. Usually there's a a little discrepancy there, but I'm, I'm a little surprised we're seeing that much of a drop, which I think is a little bit of a demonstration of the drop in interest on the part of buyers because the inventory was there. Uh, but just buyers, I think, were stepping back a little bit. Now, that gives us a total decline of 34.2% in total number of homes sold. Average list price. But if we take a look at it and we apply an average here, we, it's, it's really not hard to see what's happening. Just a steady increase as we move along but that and remember this is list price so in this in the way i report list price is a little bit different from the way other real estate folks do it this is the original list price so uh what this represents is what expectations were when someone listed the house these are not the sales numbers this is not what homes actually sold for but as you can see Compared to the same time last year, we still see expectations. So think of this graph as an expectations graph. When sellers sat down and originally listed their home for sale, these are the average numbers that they embraced. So it's not, I lowered my price after I listed it. It's not, I increased my price after I listed it. This was the original opinion of the folks selling their homes when they listed it. And that's up 39.9%. So expectations on the part of sellers today are 40% higher than last year in terms of how much they expect to make on their homes, which is standing at $1.66 million. And compared to the same time last year, expectations in terms of listing homes was $1.187 million. So this is an interesting thing I think need folks need to understand. If you're a seller who's considering selling your home, this is not that market. These expectations that we're seeing in terms of this average list price aren't terribly realistic. So I, I think that's something folks in San Jose are going to need to calibrate themselves to. And again, this also comes down to micro markets, smaller areas within San Jose, because there is a quite a bit of variation even on this one as well. All right. Next, let's look at San Jose average sales price. This is the number I really wanted to share with you today. And it's even higher than it was when I ran these. I ran these numbers in the very first week of September to get, a, to get an advanced view of where we were. And I believe the number was negative 1.3% for San Jose. Well, now we're a few weeks in. The MLS system has updated data or corrected data. And now we're seeing it's actually a 1.6% decline from the same time last year. So last year, the average sales price, August of 2021, was $1,317,373. The average sales price in San Jose today, August of 2022, is $1,296,496. I can't even remember the last time we saw a decline in the average sales price in San Jose. It has been a very, very long time since that's happened. And there's a lot of different reasons why this is happening. Focus of buyers has dropped to lower price points because of interest rates. The, the willingness in an uncertain market to pay higher prices, I think, has softened. And the bottom line is homes are not selling for what they're listed for. Homes are now, in a lot of situations, not getting those multiple offers. And there just aren't the buyers out there to push the supply and demand equation onto the side of low demand, high, high demand, low supply. We're now seeing demand not being met completely by supply. So that tends to equate to a softening in these prices. Next, let's take a look at percent of list price. So in other words, if you listed your price for 100,000, listed your home for $100,000 and you were and you sold it in March of 2022, you would have gotten 116,000, right? Because on average, homes were selling for 116% of list price. Right. Well, now we are seeing that for the again for the not the first time, we've had a few months where we've been below 100%. 99.8% for August August 2022. Uh, the same time last year, we were at 107.2% for uh, list price ratio. 
so clearly, this is another indicator. We're not getting multiple offers. We're not getting offers way over asking. And again, it's a micro market thing. There are some super desirable areas of San Jose that are seeing uh, sales happening above asking price. So it's not, this isn't obviously universal as over the entire city of San Jose, but on average, we've seen a decline in that feeding frenzy that's resulted in so many multiple offer scenarios and home selling in many cases for hundreds of thousands of dollars over the asking price. Days on market. For a very long time, I have not emphasized days on market, primarily because it was not really a real number for the last few years. And by not real, I mean when we were seeing 15 days on, on market, 17 days on market, that was really because real estate agents were simply saying, we will not accept any offers till such and such a date. And that date was usually 10 to 15 days after it was listed. So they'd want a weekend or two for folks to be able to come and look at the properties to generate as many eyes on the property as possible so that they'd have the highest probability of multiple offers when the time came. And that was a great strategy. There was, with so much demand, that made sense. Now we're seeing that's not the case. Just take a look at what we've got here. We have a 85%, 84.6% increase in the days on market. And since about July, I think these have been real numbers. These have not been numbers that are what they are because agents have said hold off on making offers until such and such a date. Once we got up to 20 days as the days to get a home sold, that's how long it's taking to get a home sold. And now we're up to 24 days to get a home sold. Last year at the same time, it was 13 days, so under two weeks. And this is just an indication of things to come. If, if Thinking about this being at this number now, in, in terms of trends, right? Obviously, we can see a dramatic increase from April to August of this year. But let's take a look at August of last year. Normally, we expect to see an increase in days on market, and we see that from October to November. Now, again, the argument that agents delaying things is one of the primary motivators here. But in past years, that's also been the case where once we start heading into winter, so the end of summer, beginning of winter, we start to see days on market increase. So from here, this number is likely going to go up. And as we f go further into winter, we will, I, I have no question that, that in, the, in short order, in the next few months, we will see 30 days being a pretty common days on market and the average days on market for many markets. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see that happening in San Jose. So that uh, really runs down the, the primary numbers here for the, for the entire San Jose area. I always like to try to give some insights so that buyers, sellers, and investors can make good decisions. And as I've done in other market analysis videos that I've done, I'd suggest you take a good look at what your long-term plans are for your home. If you are a buyer or an investor, I don't think you would be unwise to start doing a search, have an automated search running for real estate right now. Not necessarily because you're going to buy anything right now, but because as you start to see these uh, listings come on the market and see them sort of stay on the market and you see what the prices are and you see price reductions, you're going to get a better handle on what's happening in these markets. So if you're aspiring to potentially get into real estate as an investor or you just want to make that home purchase, you're going to be better calibrated than someone else who hasn't really been casually checking out what's going on in different markets. And you can have that that search running daily or weekly, whatever is comfortable for you to sit back for a few minutes each week and review the homes that have become available. But I think it'll be super valuable for you to get calibrated to what's happening in those markets as we evolve over this winter. I think the potential for great deals for buyers and investors over the next six months is pretty good. If you're a seller, evaluate what your long-term plans are. If everything looks good for you and you feel like you, you're not gonna sell your home that you're currently in for two, three, four years, I don't think you worry about it. I think you stay in your home. However, and I use, the reason I say that is because I look back at the last downturn, the 2006 to 2008 downturn, where you know five or six years later, I don't think anyone was upset that they stayed in their home. Uh, you know, Values recovered and everybody was doing fine. And I think that all of us today feel pretty good. But if you are looking at relocating or you have been looking at relocating or you're looking at retiring in the next few months or next year and part of that plan was to sell your home and move somewhere else, I think it would be smart to consider accelerating that decision so that you can sell your home at a higher point. Uh, I believe that from here on out, 
we're not, and then remember, you're not going to lose, unless you bought your home last year, which might be a different conversation to have with someone. But if you've already got some equity built up into the home, it might be a better decision to take that out now rather than wait if, you're, if your plan was already to sell next year or the year after. All right, folks, I certainly hope I have left more information on the table than I've taken up in your time. That's always the goal. I definitely want to give value to folks who take the time to watch my videos. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all next time. Have a great weekend.